Hey, this is Quinn, your favorite plumber, here today to talk about how to size your gas piping system in your home. We're gonna use the longest length method, which is the simplest, easiest way to do it. That'll get you really good results, whether or not you're doing a new project or seeing if you can add on additional capacity to your system. And I'm pretty excited today. I got a new wireless mic. The production value on these things is insane. My drawings are excellent. Can we show some you know, explosion? And let's get started. All right, today we're working on a single family house, relatively simple. We got a gas meter, we have our gas furnace, our range, a gas water heater, and a fireplace here. So those are the appliances we're gonna be working with. This video is gonna be based on the traditional systems. There are some variable gas or home run piping systems that you know can bring in a higher pressure, regulate down, and then branch out from there. In this video, the gas regulator is right at the meter. We're bringing in less than two PSI, which is low pressure throughout the whole system, and we'll size it that way. So now we're gonna have to gather some information, starting with fuel source. So most commonly, it's either gonna be natural gas, or as my British friends say, methane, or a liquid propane, or LP. And if you're in city limits, usually it's natural gas. And if you have a big tank behind your house that has to be refilled, you're probably on propane. So make sure you know your fuel source. So in this example, this little house is in city limits and it's gonna be on natural gas. Next, you're gonna to need to know what type of piping material. The two most common types are CCST or corrugated stainless steel tubing, and that's that flexible um, pipe or traditional black iron. In this video, we're gonna use traditional black iron. The reason it's important is because there's more friction that moves through that corrugated stainless steel or the CCST than your black iron, and so it can affect the different size requirements of that pipe. Next thing you're gonna need to know is your gas pressure. So in this system, we're gonna have less than two PSI or a low pressure system. Next, we'll need pressure drop in the system. This is how much pressure drops allowable. We're gonna use 0.5 inches of water column. That'll give us the most margin of error to set us up for success. Next, we're gonna to need to know the heating value of the fuel source per cubic foot. So the easiest way to find this is call your utility and say, hey, what is the heating value of the natural gas you're providing my house? Most likely it's between 900 and 1100, at least around here in Montana. We're gonna use 1000 for this video to make our math easy. The next thing we need to know is the BTU per hour rating for each appliance. The best way to do this is find the appliance rating plate and that'll be located on the back of the appliances. If you can't find it or you can't read the plate, there's some best guesses based on a table in a book, but it's always best to find the rating plate and only use uh, the estimate if you can't get it. In this example, this furnace up here will be 150,000 BTU per hour. Next, we go to the gas range. This gas range is 65,000 BTUs per hour. And a uh, little trick here is these are really important to look at. They vary hugely, uh, if that's a word, between uh, manufacturers. So take a look at that. In this example, we use 65,000 BTUs per hour. Then we have the fireplace over here. This will be 40,000. BTUs per hour load. Lastly, let's move to this water heater, and this one's a little 30 gallon, so we'll do 35,000 BTUs per hour on this one. Okay, next we're gonna take each BTU rating of each appliance and convert it to cubic feet per hour, and that way it lines up with the tables we're gonna be using to size. To convert into cubic feet, we take our BTUs per hour divided by the heating value. So in this example, our heating value is 1,000 BTUs per hour. So you take 150,000 divided by 1,000. So in this example, this furnace will be 150. Down here on the range, same exercise, we're dividing by 1,000 because that's our heating value. So this will be 65, this will be 40, and this will be 35. All right, it's time to get out the tape measure. So. We need to measure the length of pipe through the center line of the pipe or the developed length to each uh, appliance outlet. If you have a set of blueprints, you can make notes on them, or if you can scale them right off there and calculate the length, but we need to know how long these pipes are to each appliance. So before we got in the crawl space or pulled out our blueprints and figured out how we were gonna route the piping and calculated the length of each pipe. So in this example, from here to here is 10 feet. This little section from here to here is 20 feet. 
This branch to the furnace off our line here is 20 feet. This pipe section is 10 feet, obviously not to scale. This branch section to the range is going to be 15 feet. This section is 10 feet and so on and so forth. It is now time to determine the longest length of pipe to the most remote outlet. So what's the farthest appliance away and how far is that pipe? Because that's the number we're going to use in our table to size. Hence the name of this sizing method, the longest length method. So now because it's the longest length method, all we need to know is what is the distance through the center line of the pipe to the most remote outlet, meaning the farthest appliance away. In this case, it's the water heater. So this one is 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So this is a total of 60 feet away, which is the most remote outlet. All righty, let's start at the most remote outlet and we're gonna dive into the tables and size each branch and pipe section working back towards the meter. And so when you pull up your sizing tables, you'll see tons of different tables and they vary based on obviously fuel source, type of material, pressure drop, inlet pressure, all these different factors. And in our house example, we're using metallic pipe. The fuel source is natural gas. The inlet pressure is less than two PSI. Our pressure drop is 0.5 inches of water column and uh, specific gravity is 0.6. So we find the tables that line up with those variables and then we proceed to the next step. Now that we found the longest length or the farthest remote outlet, which was 60 feet, we proceed to the row titled 60 feet and we're gonna stay in this row for the remaining of the sizing. So this is our furthest remote outlet. So we're gonna start here. We got a water heater with 35 cubic feet per hour and that demand is from here to here. So to size this branch, we move to our table in the row of 60, we move on over and see a half inch pipe can carry up to 65 cubic feet per hour, so which is greater than our 35. So this section is going to be half inch. Now we're moving to the fireplace. We're still gonna be in the 60 foot row because in the longest length method, you're always gonna be in the 60 foot row. So remaining in the 60 foot row, in this branch right here to pick up the fireplace, we have a demand of 40 cubic feet per hour. So sizing in the tables, half inch carries 65. So we are still good with a half inch line here. Working our way upstream back to the meter, let's look at this 10 foot section of pipe right here. This 10 foot section of pipe serves both this fireplace and water heater. So the demand on this section from here to here is 35 plus 40 or 75 cubic feet per hour. And if we look at our sizing tables, 75, a half inch pipe can only hold 65. So we have to upsize to three quarters. A three quarter pipe can hold 137 cubic foot. So this section will be three quarter inch line. Let's next move to this range, which is this pipe section right here. And it is 65 cubic feet per hour. So if we look at our table, that is right on the border. Half inch can carry 65. So we're gonna leave it at the minimum pipe size of half inch. Working backwards, this pipe section right here, this 10 foot section is picking up the water heater, the fireplace and the range. So 35 plus 40 plus 65 is 140. So you can notice according to our tables, three quarter inch can only uh, supply 137. So we need to upsize this to one inch. Next, let's move up to this furnace branch line right there, this little 20 foot section. So the furnace is 150 and so that needs to be one inch. So now this section here, this 10 foot and 20 foot section is picking up everything upstream. So we know everything upstream of the furnace was 140 plus the furnace of 150 is 290 total cubic feet per hour demand on that section. So according to our tables, 290 is greater than 257. So this will be inch and a quarter gas line here, both this 10 foot and 20 foot section. 
So there you have it. We've sized the entire system. We know each pipe size and pipe length. We can do a takeoff for all the fittings we need to make this possible and all the terminations. And as you could tell from this video, it's very similar to sizing water systems. And now that you're familiar using the tables on how to size the piping, they also make fantastic apps. The one I use quite a bit is the WordFlex Job Site Assistant. It's free on the App Store. I think both Apple and Android have it, and that's great to use as a sizing calculator if you're not lugging a code book or sizing tables with you. You can go through, select the type of gas, all the same variables as the paper tables, and it will give you the same values except mobile friendly. Super handy, highly recommended. You can find these sizing tables online. We'll link them in the description below and also to some of our favorite apps that can do some of the sizing for you. All right, today you learned how to size your gas system using the longest length method, which is great and it's the easiest sizing method to use. We also have videos similar to this, like how to size your water lines. And if you're interested on sizing different gas pressures or more advanced gas sizing, uh, let me know in the comments. We can whip one of those up as well. Uh, and to be cliche, please like us and subscribe us. It helps this awesome production quality. We'll catch you next time.